All right, so we got the front detached and pushed up. I'm gonna very carefully pop the ball socket out of the back. Move the whole assembly forward. And you can carefully drop it out. And there we go, one Mountaineer drive shaft. Okay, we're under our Mountaineer getting ready to remove the transfer case and get rid of all the spider webs. And uh, first step before we do anything else, we're going to want to pull the drain plug, drain the fluid out of it. It uses just a 3 8 drive. That's all you need. Put your drain pan underneath. Go ahead and capture the fluid. All right, so now we're kind of just looking straight up at our transfer case. And uh, this is the drain plug that we took out here. We're letting it drip. While we got that out, I'm gonna go ahead and index our drive shaft, because we're gonna pull out the rear drive shaft. Remember, we've already pulled out the front one. So we're gonna do much the same we did there. Just gonna put an index mark on the flange to the, where the flange bolts are. Another thing you can do, you can scribe it if you want. Take an awl or something and, and just scribe a mark in there. So paint pen, scribe, anything you need. That way you know you're going to bolt this up the same spot in the flange and then have your flange line at the same spot. This way, if anything was balanced, everything's going to retain that when you put it back together. Now we're going to do the same on the back and then we'll go ahead and be ready to unbolt our drive shaft. Now to unbolt the drive shaft, we're just going to be pulling off these bits here. I'm going to put some scribe marks as well. And it looks like flange bolts are 12 millimeter. And they're a uh, 12 point. Okay. There's one. There's the second one. And then, now we've got our Mountaineer up on jack stands, so all four wheels are off the ground. So what we'll do, if we can't reach the top ones, we'll go ahead and pop it in neutral, spin it a little bit, get them where we can see them, put it back in park, and then we can go ahead and remove those. And we'll have to do the same for the back. So rather than turn the drive shaft, we can just come in with a long extension. All right, we're at our rear drive shaft. We're gonna do the same. We'll mark it. We use the awl to scratch it up as well. Now I went ahead and kept two of the flange bolts attached on the other side. That way we're holding the drive shaft as we go ahead and loosen it. And these bolts are the same size. There's one. I'm just going to get them loose. There we go. Extension for the top ones, and then just about have our drive shaft out. All right, so that's our top two bolts. Basically used a long extension on this one and then just came in with the ratchet which I have a swivel head and came up into this area. Okay, so all right, so basically our flange bolts are removed but it's still on the flange here. Now the book does say this can happen. There is a suitable place to put a pry bar and that is on either side of here. Not where there's nothing and not where the, where the straps are. So we've got our pry bar in 
got the front part disconnected, so you want to be careful that we don't drop the front ourselves. Been done. Good. There we go. That guy. Okay. Now we can drop our drive shaft down. And pull it out. Alright, here's our drive shaft. Okay, so. Next up, we're going to be removing the uh, bolts on the um, transmission mount. This is basically attached to the transfer case and uh, then the transmission's there. So once we remove this part, we're going to need to support the transmission with a jack and a piece of wood. Um, but first, we can go ahead and get the bolts out. So hopefully I've got the right socket. Looks like uh, there's the nuts here that go with the actual assembly and then there's two bolts up top. So we're going to basically be pulling all those out. And I think it's a 17 here and a 15 on the nut. Let's see. Actually, I don't know if this is gonna fit on. This might be an 18 and that's not a big deal. I need to get some rust penetrant anyway. Yeah, those are uh, probably an 18. All right, I'll be right back. Yep. 18 it is. Second one. Okay, and then the actual bolts we need to get, there's one of them. And then uh, corresponding one on the other side there. Okay, so on the uh, one mount on the pass, so on the bolt on the passenger side, they were nice enough to include a little pass through on the uh, cross member to use an extension, so that'll help. And this one's got enough room on this side you can fit a regular ratchet in there and get. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those off. All right, so here is our Borg Warner 4410 transfer case. And our 2000 Dream Mountaineer all-wheel drive transfer case. Now, grab my other light. We've uh, unbolted our mount. And then up here, Along in here is where our bolts would have been. That's where two of them go. And we have removed all of those. There's seven in total. The ones up top, as you can see, are very, very tough to get to. Um, maybe when we reassemble, I can kind of show you what we did. But basically, it is possible. Um, I did not have to move or lower it at all. All it really took was the right um, number of extensions, um, basically to bring it out you know, the ratchet out to say right in this spot right here, um, maybe up in here, kind of clear some of the um, body contours. And uh, so it's just a combination of extensions along with uh, a swivel on the end and all of them came out pretty easily. Um, they are in very tight because they're Loctite from the factory. So they take a lot to break loose and uh, they kind of are, are tight the whole way out, but uh, they come out just fine. And uh, once you get them pretty far out, they're finger tight, and we got them all removed. So we're at the point now where we're ready to pull out our transfer case. Um, so we're gonna need to pull the flo uh, floor jack in here. Um, in the meantime, got this bottle jack 
sitting on a hi-hat brake rotor from our WJ project. Glad I kept that because we've got this lifted so high on the jack stands. We've got a block of wood on our transmission. And uh, as you can see, well, hopefully you'll be able to see. Let's see if I can position this to help. Anyway, as we jack this up, we're basically gonna be moving the transfer case off of this transmission mount, and then we'll be able to go ahead and pull this out. Uh, once we do that, we should be able to kind of move the transfer case with it supported on a jack, pull it back, tilt it down and out, and uh, I'm sure it'll be fun. And uh, that's the plan, and we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna move the camera out from under the vehicle and uh, hopefully get a shot in and then uh, start working on it and we'll see how it goes. So basically, I'm gonna put this jack in place. It's gonna get tight under here. Now the transfer case weighs about 50 pounds or so, so obviously it's Alright, got that end on the jack. The rest of it we're going to have to do ourselves. There's our mount. There we go, breaking it loose. All right, now we're starting to move it. There's a fuel line bracket up there. So that fuel line bracket is kind of catching it a little bit, at least I think it is, so I'm going to pull it this way a little bit. Yeah, that's definitely what it's caught on. So I'm going to have to see if I can get that piece. Clear now. We ought to be smooth sailing. There we go. That did it. All right, let's slowly drop this sucker down. Very slow, slowly. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> or too fast, and then... All right. Whew. There we go. A little less graceful than I would have wanted. But when in doubt, just manhandle it. Rip the damn thing out. All right, well, some good news. We don't have any output shaft problems or input shaft problems. We had a nice dry area in here, which is excellent. So, pretty psyched about that. We'll show you the view as soon as I pull this sucker out of here. Get out of here, you dumb jack. You didn't help. I did all the heavy lifting. All right, and here's the back of our transmission. And again, we're gonna have to come in here and 
scrape off this paper gasket. We got a new one of those to put on between the two halves. And uh, other than that, it looks nice and clean back here, so that's a good sign. Looks like one of our lights is dying on us. Okay, so that's essentially it. And we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, mount back in, just so we remember which way it went. Add that butt up to it, so that way we don't forget it. So that way we don't forget its orientation, that is. I highly doubt I would forget it.